and welcome back to Bear's Reading Nook. I'm Kara and today we're gonna be starting the whatever thon week two vlog because I'm weird and I'm starting this on a Tuesday. Um, okay, so first update on where I'm at in the um, Conceal Don't Feel and um, Redwall. So Conceal Don't Feel, I'm about 64% through. Um, I'm intrigued enough to figure out how things will like kind of come about but it is very much um fan service slash money grab because people liked frozen when it came out and there are whole scenes in the book that are exactly how they play out in the movie and it's Honestly, it's annoying. What I kind of wish the book did was um, explore new areas versus rehashing um, various parts of the movie and just kind of like putting them in there when they can fit it um, because that's kind of what it feels like. So I'm not liking it because of that. It's honestly probably going to end up being a three star. However, I'm really enjoying the like story that's being played out and how that's coming about and I may or may not have teared up a couple times in this, even though it's probably going to end up being a three-star read. I'm still enjoying it enough, and I'm along for the ride. So, Redwall. I am 19% through the audiobook current, or not audiobook, ebook, Kindle. Um, and I'm bored. I'm incredibly bored. Um, my goal was to make it 25% um, through the book or roughly about 100 pages in, um, whichever comes first. And that is still my goal, but if it continues how it's been, I will honestly probably DNF this because I, I'm bored, haven't really had fun with this, and it's just, it's not doing it for me. Um, so yeah, but I wanted to give it an honest effort, and since it's for my friend book club, I I really wanted to try, so we'll see. Um, but if I'm honest, I'm not hopeful. Um, so I want to do my best to try and finish Conceal Don't Feel within the next day or two. That should be possible, um, especially since I have work tomorrow, and... Um, yeah, I would be able to listen to that during work. Um, and also, I want to definitely give it a very good try for Redwall. <sighs> but, like I said, it's not looking good. Um, because of moving and all this stuff, like, I am extremely stressed. So, as far as reading more stuff, um, I'm being kind of nice to myself. These are kind of what I'm in the mood for. And the first of that being the next three volumes, which is seven, eight, and nine of Death Note. Um, this is a series that I started, like, honestly a year or two ago at this point. Um, and I was really enjoying it when I read it, but then I just stopped reading it for some reason. But this follows um, the main character of... Uh, Light, who finds a death note, and basically um, any name that you write in the death note will die, and um, he starts out by using the death note uh, for bad people, and then things kind of go from there. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, at times, certain parts of it definitely feel like big brain chess plays, um, which if you've read any part of this, you will understand hopefully what I'm meaning. Um, but also another reason for reading this is that um, this is one of Spoop's favorites, and so it counts for that um, on the board as well as um, continuing a series and one more title because Death Note is one word. Um, if I manage to finish those, the Conceal Don't Feel and Redwall, then I also have Fruits Basket, which 
is a manga I've been meaning to get to. It's sounded really interesting, I just haven't gotten around to it yet, and so I thought, why not now? So, um, I don't know much about this, but the little bit that I know is intriguing. I feel like there is something about zodiacs in here. I could be wrong, but like, I'm fine going in blind. This sounded really interesting when I read about it, um, like the synopsis or whatever. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Okay, so if I manage to get through all of these, um, then the next book that I'd like to pick up would be, I believe it's Can't Be Love, um, I'll put the picture up here, but that book is the one that won the pull pick, um, and I'm excited to continue on with that series. So it is the fifth book, and I think it's the Weston Pack series. Um, and it follows, um, the series follows basically different siblings of the Weston family who are, like, the leaders of the Weston pack who are wolf shapeshifters, basically. Um, and each book follows one of the siblings and their one true mate, uh, love story. And I surprisingly enjoyed the first book and so I kept on with the series and then somehow just, like, didn't read the fifth one, so I'm excited to check that one out. But yeah, so these are my plans for this week. We'll see how I do. I definitely um, am taking it easier on myself because I need a break. I have been doing a lot of house stuff, <laughs> and so hopefully this is a good break for me, but I will see you in a bit. Um, when I have an update. Okay, so this this week's vlog is starting off great. Um, so first off, Conceal Don't Feel finished it. It's currently rated on Goodreads as a three star for me, but honestly, it may drop down to a two. Um, basically, my issue with this book is that it just feels very much like the author like set aside certain chunks of the movie that they wanted like certain scenes in there and then just kind of wrote around it and like tried to make it interesting but I it just felt like a ripoff to me and I really didn't like it at all <laughs> like it's fine but if I'm honest, I think it will probably drop down to a two star. Um, as far as the um, bingo board goes, I don't even know if it fits for anything. It may potentially fit for like on a previous TBR, but I don't know if I'm going to count it for that. So yeah, that's finally done. And then freaking Redwall. I know that Redwall is very much loved and all that, but for whatever reason, like, I am, I think, 26% in it. Um, I believe it's 26% and, like, on page 100. So, I made it 100 pages into this. Yeah, 26% 100 pages in. I made it 100 pages in I do not care about any of the characters. There was one that I, like, cared about very briefly, which was, I want to say Basil, um, but, like, I don't care about the characters. I don't care about what's going on. Like, I get that it's a conflict between, like, the mice slash woodland creatures that kind of, like, live in Redwall, and then the rats, but, like, I don't care enough about the conflict to care about anything. For me, um, based on what I've read currently, it doesn't feel like there's really high stakes at all, um, especially for um, the like mice and like that side. Um, so like, I I'm not connecting with anything. <laughs> I know this is a book club book with my friends, but I just, I can't, I'm struggling already with this book and I don't need to 
basically put myself into a reading slump trying to force myself to read this. I'm not connecting with it. I don't care about the characters. I don't care about the story. I'm DNFing it. <laughs> so, sorry about that, but I, I don't care and I just need to move on. So, um, I think what I'll be reading next is at least the, I say the first, it's the seventh, um, of the Death Note series, and then I may switch to this one at some point, um, and then, um, I will need an audiobook to listen for work stuff, so that will be, um, Can't Be Love, I believe is what it is, which is the Weston Pack book that I think I mentioned in the last clip, um, but, ooh, but that will be the um, audiobook that I'm reading for potentially the rest of this week. And then these are what I'm moving on to. So hopefully I like these better <laughs> because oh, the last two. It's another uh, car update. Um, so I just got back home and I realized I hadn't updated you guys basically this entire week. So um, I think I mentioned in an earlier clip, I did finish um, Conceal Don't Feel and I did DNF um, Redwall. The other plans that I had for this week were reading um, Fruits Basket volume one which was the collector's edition which i did end up reading really enjoyed i want to say it was thursday i had a little like picnic and went to a park and read outside absolutely loved that i also was planning on reading the i think it was seventh eighth and ninth volume of death note however after reading the seventh one um and that being about a three-star read i'm gonna hold off a bit for reading the 8th and ninth volumes. Um, so basically my issue with the 7th volume is that it just felt like we were in people's heads a lot. Um, and it, it's almost like we were being told um, various things um, than actually being shown. Um, and so like there were two specific characters three specific characters that, um, we kind of were in the heads of, and so, like, they're either telling us the plan that they have, that they're trying to, you know, have happen, or they're trying to figure out other people's plans and kind of, like, what those people were expecting to happen from those plans as they're unfolding and like it's fine but I wasn't the biggest fan of it and so that's a three star I just need a little bit of a break okay so as far as um can't be love I am about 50 to 55 percent through um I am really enjoying it so far we're following Lily who is I don't think she's the youngest but she is the last one that we have um to kind of like see the love story unfold with and um so it is between her and Thomas and Thomas is actually the youngest brother of Lily's um like best friend growing up and basically at one point in another book something happens with the best friend and we learn about it. She is um, the love interest in a different book. I think for her, it might actually be for her twin brother. I think it is. But basically like things happen and um, because of what happened in the past, uh, she, Lily, views Thomas as the biggest douchebag ever and does not want anything to do with him at first and just like no like he's not redeemable because of like what he did kind of thing but like 
what he did makes sense. Um, yeah, but we just got a big, like, plot twist, um, and so I'm excited to see where it goes. A little hesitant, um, but that's because kind of right before, or like a little bit before, um, this happened, we kind of learn information and then it's almost like immediately like jumping into that, which I mean is fair. Um, but I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm enjoying it so far. I really like them. They're cute and it's just, mm, it's good. Uh, but yeah, um, I also started a new ebook, which is Promises and Pomegranates. This one, this one could go like many different ways, but this is a dark contemporary romance um, that is also kind of like mafia-esque, um, has a lot of trigger warnings, and um, yeah. So it follows Cal and Elena, um, and basically Cal is, I want to say like the kind of like enforcer guy for the Boston mob, and, um, Elena is the, um, like, Mafia Don's daughter, um, and I think I'm, like, 5% in this. Basically, all that's happened so far is, um, Cal kind of mentioned possibly wanting... Elena, and Elena is getting ready for her wedding to another guy completely. Um, I'm intrigued. I also don't read dark romance, so I'm a little scared. Um, this one may take me a little bit more to get through, like a little bit longer to get through, um, and I may offset it with something like uh, the Twisted Ones, or, um, I mean, Can't Be Loved, possibly, unless I finish that today, which I'm really enjoying it, so I might, um, or just, like, something else, because it seems, like, really, really dark, and I think I looked up the trigger warnings, like, at one point, and it was just, like, a, a long, long list of it, and I, yeah, so I'm a little bit scared about this book, but I'm still going to give it an honest try, um, especially since I think I bought it um, for like my birthday or somewhere around there um, just because it was interesting. And I think it also had mentioned like Hades and Persephone, but like it. It's very, very, very loosely kind of that, if at all, which honestly, I don't think it is currently that, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I think that's all the books that I can think of that I'm currently reading right now. Um, oh. Uh, since I did finish a Death Note, uh, I may start in on Network Effect, which I believe is the first novel in the Murderbot series, um, just because I want something physical to read as well, so that way I have a physical book, an audiobook, and an ebook going at the same time. Um, so yeah, I guess that's... My plans currently? Okay, so um, I guess my goal would be to potentially finish Can't Be Loved Today, um, especially since I'm already um, a little bit over the halfway mark and it's pretty easy reading. Um, it shouldn't take too terribly long. Um, and that would, I think, give me... Ooh, I think that would give me like three more prompts ticked off for that book and also um, uh, Death Note also takes off three. I believe it's, um, host fave, 
continue series and one word title because even if Death Note isn't technically one word, the title of the um, seventh volume itself is, I believe, called Zero. So that works for that. Okay, so it's technically the start of the third week of whatever thon, so the start of this vlog. Um, if you can hear my fan, it's because it's on, because it's really hot right now, because we're in a heat advisory. It's really hot. Um, so we're just going to deal with it. Um, so this week, I am hopefully going to actually finish um, Can't Be Love, because I am 60 to 70% of the way through that. Haven't finished it yet. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I just, for whatever reason, haven't finished it. Um, so working on that, um, I started, um, promised and promise and pomegranates or whatever. I'll put the, I'll put it up here. Um, yesterday I have not read anymore. I think I'm like four or 5% in. Um, I mean, so far it's fine. It is a dark romance between, I'm calling him the enforcer, I feel like that's the correct term, but I could be wrong, but I don't care, that's what we're going with. But he is um, the enforcer, Cal. Cal is the enforcer for the Boston um, Mafia, um, and so it is a kind of dark romance with him and with Elena, who is the Mafia Don's daughter. Um, and yeah, I will let you know when I have more progress in that, but I would like to make a good bit of headway on that, but because it's dark romance and I, like, don't read that, it could take a bit. Um, I'm also 94, about 94, 95 pages through Network Effect. Um, this is good so far. It is... Um, it takes place after the events of the Murderbot Diaries novellas, so I can't really explain too much about it, um, but it follows more adventures of Murderbot, and I am super excited about it. Hello! Hi there! Yes, I do exist. I'm just really bad at this, apparently. Um, I don't think I've updated you in a bit, so, um, let's start with what I have finished. So I finished Can't Be Love, and I finished Network Effect. Both ended up getting four stars. Um, here's what the board looks like now that I've completed them. Um, I didn't end up putting a Network Effect on there at all, just because I didn't know where, like, or what it would work for for me. Um, but I did, like, record it as one of the books that I read on whatever thon, um, the tracker. So yeah, this is what the board looks like. And now let's get into replacing the books. <laughs> so for the audiobook, um, I am honestly kind of feeling like a summer thrillery thing, um, which the one I picked out also works for water on the cover so that's at least two and i think this is a 2021 20, release so that already checks off three things once i read this um and that is the missing um and basically the synopsis says they disappeared that was just the beginning when five strangers are abandoned on an island without any idea where they are or whom to trust their nightmarish new reality begins to unfold Someone is lying. Someone is hiding a terrible secret. They'll all do anything to get home, wouldn't they? That just sounds fantastic. Like, hmm. I am here for that. Okay, so for physical books, I have um, four options. One being The Merciful Crow. Um, basically, all I really know about this one is that it's fantasy and that... There's a future chieftain, a fugitive prince, a too cunning bodyguard, and one grumpy gray tabby, which sounds fantastic. Like, 
I'm definitely intrigued by this and I hope I like it. Maybe I'll get to it soon. Next is a YA Contemporary, which is Breathe and Count Back from 10. This basically follows a girl with hip dysplasia who wants to be a professional mermaid and um, also ends up learning that what she knows as far as her um, medical condition may not be the full story. And so it's also kind of like her taking back her body and her choices, which sounds really interesting. Also, this cover is gorgeous. Just saying. Next is a chonker. And that is Caliban Solar, which is the second book in the Expanse series. Um, I mean, honestly, this sounds fantastic. There's a lot going on. In this one, we are introduced to um, some new characters and it sounds so good and I'm really excited and having watched this show, I want to see like the stuff in here play out. So I may want to get to this soon, but also it's so big. <laughs> like this is almost 600 pages, I feel like. Yeah, it's 595. This is 595 pages. I will say it's got a good flop though. But yeah, 595 pages. We'll see. And then finally, Sundial, which is a horror. I don't know what to read, but like all of these sound interesting. So we'll see what I read. Um, maybe I'll read a couple of these, maybe I'll read none of these, and I'll end up reading something else. Who knows? I sure do. <laughs> um, also, update on Promises and Pomegranates. I am, um, 12% through, I think, like, page 47? Um, yeah, page 47. It's fine so far. I'm basically just waiting for things to get real and see how that goes and if I'm going to like continue with it just because I have not read a dark romance I do want to give this like an honest try but depending on how dark the dark is who knows that's all for this video I'll see you guys in the next one bye